The ancient Romans were indeed master builders. For thousands of years, their incredible constructions have stood the test of time. Yet now, all around us, we see worn out nine-story buildings. So, what was Rome's secret? How did they possess such incredible technology? And why can't we replicate it today? Roads, subways, aqueducts, and heated floors let me tell you about the most insane structures and engineering solutions that remain out of reach even for modern people. Let's start with roads. It was mainly for decoration and smoothing corners to give floors the right and beautiful shape, or to hide them on building facades. But let's move on. I've talked about aqueducts, comparing them to sewers, but normal sewage was also present in mills in principle. One of the most significant yet lesser known creations of ancient Romans were monumental collectors, also known as the Cloaca Maxima. This was not just a sewer system, it was a whole engineering network built over 1,600 years ago. Originally, the Cloaca Maxima was built not as a sewage system, but as a system to drain water from local swamps. Imagine, its total length was 800 meters, and it still operates to this day, albeit as a storm sewer. The scale of the Cloaca Maxima is staggering. In some places, Two carts could ride side by side, the channel reaching a width of 3 meters and a depth of all Roman gravity slopes. Even pumping stations were installed to lift liquid uphill. It's hard to pinpoint exactly when the system turned into a full-fledged sewer, but over time, as cities grew, it delved deeper into their bowels, eventually covering them completely. Again, I'll remind you, this was not the Middle Ages or something similar but years before our era. And here's another ingenious creation, arch bridges. Although the concept of the arch was known before the Romans, they took it to a new level of sophistication. They realized that by breaking the arch into many small segments, they could create much more powerful and reliable structures. Take, for example, the Amritnar Bridge in Turkey. It spans 330 meters, and consists of 26 segmented arches with a slight rise, giving the bridge an amazingly flat profile. This bridge remained unparalleled in its characteristics for a whole millennium. Or consider the Danube Bridge at Drobeta, with its wooden segmented arches supporting open spans, resting on 43 concrete piers. This bridge was the longest arch bridge for thousands of years, both in total length and in the length of individual spans. The longest surviving Roman bridge is the Merida Bridge, stretching 790 meters. But imagine the scale of the task of building such bridges without modern technology. And here, the Romans impress again. They were able to create unique devices and techniques that allowed them to build these majestic structures. Romans used various tools such as chisels, picks, and hammers for rough stone processing. Then, for finer work, they used toothed hammers, chisels, and saws, which appeared in the early Christian era. Various types of saws were used to shape stone, creating reliable bricks and blocks for construction. When it came to lifting heavy blocks, the Romans used remarkably advanced lifting mechanisms such as the trispast and polyspast. The trispast consisted of two wooden beams and blocks, with one block being stationary and the other movable. A rope passed through the lower block wound around a winch operated by levers, allowing the weight to be raised or lowered to the desired height. The polyspast was a similar device, but with five blocks, allowing even heavier loads to be lifted. These mechanisms combine power mechanisms in the form of a hub wheel driven by slaves and transmission mechanisms of block and lever systems. The most advanced trispasts and polyspasts could be installed on a rotating wooden platform similar to modern lifting cranes. And do you know how the Romans organized construction even 500 years before our era? Specialized teams of workers with unique skills and traditions worked in each area of construction. Interestingly, the Romans' organizational talent was particularly evident in the decoration of buildings. For example, in the Pantheon, columns were installed simultaneously with the construction of walls, but usually, decorative elements were prepared in advance and installed only after the walls were erected. 
This significantly sped up the construction process. The Romans first built the buildings, and then began the finishing touches. Marble panels were attached to the walls with brackets, or the walls were simply covered with decorative plaster. The separation of construction and finishing led to these two processes being viewed as independent of each other. Over time, this led to finishing becoming more formal and less organically connected to the structure, and buildings of the later years of the Roman Empire became more standardized and uniform. However, construction proceeded very quickly. I must tell you about Roman concrete. As promised at the beginning, this amazing material, made from a mixture of volcanic ash, gravel, lime, and sand, had extraordinary strength and versatility. It could be used to create structures of any shape, making it ideal for a wide range of construction purposes. Interestingly, Roman architects initially used concrete to cast the foundations of altars. But over time, they began to experiment with this material, leading to the creation of architectural masterpieces such as the Pantheon, the largest unreinforced concrete structure in the world, which has stood for over 2,000 years. Scientists have discovered that the secret of the longevity of Roman concrete lies not only in volcanic ash, but also in the inclusion of so-called lime clusters, small pieces of unslaked lime. These components contributed to the self-healing of concrete upon contact with water, making it even stronger and more durable. It is interesting to note that the presence of unslaked lime in concrete was not accidental or a sign of poor quality control. On the contrary, it was a deliberate addition, underscoring their strict discipline in technology development. Slave labor in the military society of the Roman Empire doubtedly implied high responsibility and strict adherence to all technological processes, especially in building construction. Therefore, everyone was afraid of making mistakes and deviating from the original technology, which allowed them to achieve these amazing results. Well, I thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. Until next time, friends.